The views expressed on the following program are designed to amplify those of the speaker and are not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. It's marvelous. Manifold awesome, man, it's great to be alive considering the alternative, massively meaningful Monday, as we let go of the things that so easily weigh us down and cast us aside, move those things over, in order to be refreshed by the king of the universe. First up, Bible-believing born-again Christians are not immune to pain and or disappointment, but how we direct our words to God during this process, can create more trouble. Ooh, that's not good. Next, there is a line between sharing our feelings with God and foolishly blaming or charging God for failing at his job. Do we know the difference? Well, we better know. And finally, as usual, it all comes down to perspective. There's the world's perspective, there's our perspective, and then there's God's perspective. Guess which one we need to use? David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing politics, entertainment, and current events. Kind of hard to escape that for a little bit. Personal revelations, spiritual observations, my life's insanities, and oy vey, so much more. Hey, 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 we're asking you, what do you think? Now you can reach out to us, you can call us. This is by phone. So if you're going to use this number, it is by phone. 972-445-0770. How's that? Is that really good? Pretty good. Some good pace there. You that think? was a great pace. Okay. Very steady. Very steady. All right. If you're gonna text in, I think you guys know the text number is two one four two one zero eight four eight three. Those are the ways that you get in touch with us. If you actually text in, it'll go right to the phone that's on my desk. I would prefer not to get some of the obscene signs and things that I get from time to time. That'd be nicer. Uh, Also, uh, people that engage with us on the desk, we can do it. And if you call in, that is calling actually on the phone at the 972-445-0770 number. That's where Terrific T will answer the phone and everything will be right as rain. Now, we do this so that you can either share a praise report prayer request, maybe have a pop question, maybe you got a comment, that's cool, it's all good as long as you keep it decent. In other words, uh, you know, go back to that the old movie, keep it classy, you know, Texas, <laughs> that's the way to say it, and then uh, you're welcome to do that. We also do trivia, here's our first trivia question, so get ready, don't don't freak out, Don't even if you don't, even if you're not the first person to call or text in, as long as you know it, that's what's important, right? Joseph... The husband of Mary did what for a living? Joseph, the husband of Mary, did what for a living? All right. Uh, Do not forget, folks, any topic is open for conversation. Why? Because it's not professional radio. It's just radio. It's crossed between Steve Martin, Sean Hannity, and Focus on the Family, the David Spoon Experience. So buckle up, little campers. Here we go. Let's do a quick round out for our DNA, if that's good. By the way, Terrific T covering all bases today. She is the utility player on the team. Good job, T. All right, here it is, DNA. This is what we're made of. No matter what you hear, no matter what you do, no matter what you hear, no matter what you do, no matter what you hear, no matter what you do, 
It's kind of like a carnival barker, right? Okay. DNA. The first is D. Draw closer to the Lord. Daily. Daily. How often? Daily. 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 Draw closer to the Lord. Never be ashamed. So that's the D is for draw closer to the Lord. The N, never be ashamed. And the A for our DNA is always be ready. To serve. To serve. That is what you are supposed to be made up of as a Christian. You draw closer to the Lord every day. You are never ashamed and you're always ready. This, by the way, came from my brother saying to me long before this political uh, upheaval happened, when everything was going on, when COVID was just striking big and everybody was trying to figure out what to do, he was like, well, what's the best place for us to be on a regular basis? It's like, well, this is the DNA for Christians, how they should be on a regular basis. They should be drawing closer to the Lord daily. They should never be ashamed and always be ready to be used by the the Lord. I mean, that's always be ready to be served. That's it. There you go. Everything else, God's going to have to work out because you and I, eh, 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 not that smart. <laughs> Is that a nice way to say that? Not that smart. All right. Do we do a website on this intro here? I can. No, we hardly ever do that. All right. I'm going to say two th- things, then get into the teaching, uh, or I'm going to say two things and expound upon that. I know a lot of people. Uh, that uh, are uh, connected to the show or have some kind of listening uh, to the show. Uh, Some people are up, some people are down, some people are in, some people are out, which means that some people are freaking out, some people aren't freaking out. It's all that stuff that's going on. Let me say a couple things. One, directly to Alton, one of our listeners who usually reaches out to me and asks me how I'm doing and asks to pray for me on a weekly basis, I'm telling him specifically, you'll probably hear me say this tomorrow because I have no other way to get in touch with him, uh, that I am taking a 30-day snooze from Facebook. I'm taking a 30-day snooze because it's just nutty in Facebook land. And I don't need that uh, stuff ripping at me. You should see the hundreds and thousands of things that are being said. And uh, here's my response to that, taking a break. And so, Alton, if you need to pray for me, bro, and I know you want to be praying for me, and I greatly appreciate that, try and send me an email through the website, hemustincrease.org. That's a good way to go about it. Number two, and I'm just going to say this and move right into the teaching. I'm not going to get in depth. But for those that are trying to figure out how to handle what's going on with the election, all this, I'm going I'm to give you the two best lines that I think nobody has said to this point. Ready? Keep up, but... Line number two, don't get caught up. Is that good, right? Keep up, but don't get caught up. Okay, okay, okay. Keep up, okay, but don't get caught up. Too many people are getting caught up, right? If you have to go every five or ten minutes and check your internet feed so you can see what's the latest news in regards to what's going on, my response to you is you are caught up. Stop being caught up. Keep up, but don't get caught up. That's as nice a way as Dave can say it, okay? Which is because this is not all about what's going on here. Remember? Our place, heaven. Okay, I'm just reminding you. Okay, all right. Somebody calling in. Yay! And I will wait for the other ring, and then I'll push the button. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hey, David. This is Al. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. How are you? I'm doing just just wonderful. And you can always pick up on the first ring for me if you need to. Okay, that's good. I can do that, too. (laughs) It's my wife that goes, you know, it just rings and rings. It's like, okay, yes, dear. Anyway, (laughs) All right, my friend Joseph, the husband of Mary, what did he do? What was the family business? Was he a carpenter? That is correct, sir. (laughs) Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Carpenter it was. There was a very good, uh, very good reason to believe that when Jesus did some of his teachings, any kind of carpenter reference, he would know maybe a little bit better than most people because his dad was definitely involved in most likely for the things that he did, he was involved. So, I mean, there's a great understanding there, a wonderful thing. How you doing in general? Did you have a good weekend? Oh, yeah, it was good. How about you? I did. I had a really uh, a really good weekend, very productive school-wise, and I actually worked out three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I worked out all three days and then didn't work out today. So t- Monday is turning into a nicer day because I don't have to work out on it. 
<laughs> yeah. That's my approach yeah, right they, now. <laughs> they, they tell me that if you keep working out, your body will just uh, will, will crave it. Um, that's one thing my body's never craved is working out. So. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. If it's a donut, yeah. okay. But working out <laughs> has never has never worked that way for me. I agree with you a hundredfold. <laughs> All right, my friend. All Excellent. Buddy. Thank you so much for calling in. Hey, take care. Have All a good day. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, so uh, I'm going to start this whole teachy thing that I'm going to do, which, by the way, it has to do with being in the grip of grace in a second. But I want to read you this one passage, and I want you to understand this. This uh, applies not just to what I was just talking about in regards to the election. This kind of applies to everything in your life. Uh, You'll understand when we get to it. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, gorge it out and throw it away. For it's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So Jesus is not advocating that everybody walks around with an eye patch and a hook for a hand. Okay, can we not? Can we at least understand what he's trying to say here? This is, of course, in the framework of adultery, by the way, in in the Sermon on the Mount. And what he is saying is, look, if your eye is really causing some problems, you got to stop that. If your hand is causing you some problems, you got to stop that. And you think, well, why would it be the eye and why would it be the hand? Because almost everything that we process goes through what we see and what we touch or what we do or what we put our hands to. And Jesus said an amazing thing. And I only got a second to really you know, key in on it, but I want you to think about it. He said, gorge it out, cut it out. If you've got something in your life and it's causing you to walk further from the Lord, including checking your internet feed every five minutes so you can keep updated, then Jesus has a response to that. Cut it out. Get it out of your life. Treat it radically because it's affecting your kingdom walk, and you don't want to do that. What you want to do is have your eyes and hands focused towards the kingdom of God, not caught up in the things around it. Okay? All right. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Like any person searching for answers, I too have wondered about him. He has a weird sense of humor. If people are seeking wisdom and insight from the great teachers around the world, would they go to David? No, I don't think so. Those big ears really don't help. Will people enjoy his perspective on culture, politics, food, sports, and local and national news? I don't know. He's just a client. Tune in to the David Spoon Experience weekdays at 2 on KAAM. What is the David Spoon Experience? Can I blow your mind? You know, I did this with you before, but on a different text. I love this text. You will love this text because you and I are sci-fi people. You'll love this. I mean, this is one of those, oh, goodness gracious, that's so good. Uh, 1 Samuel 23, 10 through 12. 1 Samuel 23, 10 through 12. Okay, 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 okay. 1 Samuel 23, 10 through 12 says this, Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Saul is seeking to come to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Kela surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down just as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then David said, Will the men surrender me and my men to the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. I love this portion because people, we, we think in these boxes and we force God into our theology and say he must conform here, which is just insanity by itself. Here's a situation where David hears that Saul is coming down to try and get him. And he's asking, will the people of the city surrender me? I've helped them. I've defended them. I've given them some deliverance. Is, is Saul going to come in and change their mind and they're going to give me up? And the Lord says, yeah, that's going to happen. Now, if you read the rest of the passage in 1 Samuel 23, David leaves. So he is not surrendered to Saul by the men of the city. But what I want you to catch is this. God knew what the outcome was going to be if David stayed and what the outcome was going to be 
if David left. In other words, God knew the alternate universe or the alternate pathway that was taking place. We've talked about this before. It's one of those cool thoughts where we don't think of it in these terms. But remember, David says to God, hey, uh, are they going to give me up? And the Lord's like, yeah, they're going to give you up. That's what's going to happen. So you need to make a decision and go a different direction so we can have a different outcome. And it's like God knew what the outcome was if they gave him up, and God knew what the outcome was if he left. God knew what it would be if it went if he went left or right, if we went west, east, north, or south. God knew what the outcome was going to be no matter what because God is omniscient. He knows all things, which means he knows every alternate route. On Christ the solid rock I stand. On Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. Okay. Guess who uh, reached out to me by phone, but I don't know if he's listening yet on the radio. Alton. <laughs> Remember I just said Alton? But, yes. but he, he, was, he sent me a message like, hey, I couldn't reach you on Facebook. So uh, I'm doing a Facebook. I don't know if he's listening now, so I'm going to kind of text him while I'm talking to everybody. See, I'm multitasking. It's pretty pretty good for, for, uh, for a Jewish guy. Uh, and so I'm going to tell him I'm Facebook snoozing for 30 and then just, you know, send it to me uh via email via uh text and that way he can pray for me so alton if you can hear this uh oh good he's listening all right so just send it to me uh send the request by text i'm gonna tell him and everybody else what i need prayer for this week but uh, alton's my go-to guy he's been praying for me on a weekly basis so alton for the next 30 days on facebook snoozing uh just to take a break so just reach out to me directly through the phone that's fine uh for those that don't know i could use a little prayer i've got a doctor's appointment thursday it's nothing uh, serious regular on the radar kind of stuff but I've noticed a few physical things that I want to talk to the doctor about. Of course, I've, I know he's going to go, you're getting older. <laughs> I, I hate when, the, when you go to the doctor. You ever notice that you go to the doctor, you feel really bad. Then you walk in the office. And then the things that you felt really bad don't have the same flare up at the moment. Has that ever happened to you? Where you go to the doctor oh, and it's yeah, like, of and then you walk in there and then it's like, where was all this ache and pain that I was having an hour and a half ago? Anyway, that's what happens to me. So, Alton, I know you're listening. So, therefore, reach out to me via the phone. I'll send you direct uh, prayer requests. Uh, that way you can know. So, I'm just snoozing on the Facebook. Well, and listen, for those that are so uh, into the process, I'm telling you, you got to be careful. It's one thing to be uh caught uh caught up in the snare of the world you got to get away from that you can you can stay informed without being overwhelmed and that's what i'm asking everybody to do just be careful you guys you have to be careful what you take in between your left and your right ear just like you have to be careful how many donuts you take in if you take in too many donuts it shows on other parts of your body right right so if you take in too much garbage in your left and right ear it's going to show up inside your mind and heart same thing it's what you eat you know, whether and remember, uh, Jesus is the one that talked about the word of God being like bread. So, you know, that words, thoughts and all that stuff are a part of the process by by which you develop. So just, you know, be aware of that. All right. Uh, here is trivia question uh, number two. OK, trivia question number two. OK. All right. This is out of Samuel. So I'm giving everybody a little bit of a break, you know, just so you can know ahead of time. OK. All right. This is out of Samuel. Speak for thy servant. Okay. Now you got to finish it. Speak for thy servant. Okay. Uh, if you know that answer, you are welcome to call the show, 972-445-0770, or you can text in 214-210-8483. Don't forget about our website, he must increase dot. Org. Website, he must increase dot org, he must increase dot org. Email David at he must increase dot org. Facebook, he must increase ministry. YouTube, he must increase ministry. All right. Now, I owe Paige a Hebrew word. <laughs> I'm just trying to catch up, folks. That's all I'm trying to do. So let's get our Hebrew word stuff ready to go, because I'm going to do a Hebrew word. Do we have our little our little sound? Here we go. Hava, nagila, hava, nagila, hava, nagila, 
All right. So the Hebrew word for today, get ready. Get ready, get ready. I want you to think about it. It's yarad. Yarad. And yarad means to go downhill. To go downhill. So we would say, hey, isn't it fascinating how the mainstream media has gone yarad? <laughs> Or downhill. <laughs> See how that works? See how that works? Downhill. Yarad. Y-A-R-A-D. Y-A-R-A-D. Yarad. Uh, you might say you'd rather go downhill, but yarad means to go down, to come down, to descend, like the mainstream media. Descend. <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, you know those little whistles they used to have where it goes, uh, the downside of that, <laughs> that would be your rod. It's like, okay, the news has gone your rod in credibility. Downhill! Okay. All right, let's, I think we've covered almost everything there is in the universe. I'd like to do some teaching now. Thank you. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. You have said, it is useless to serve God. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord of hosts? So now consider the arrogant, uh, so now we consider the arrogant to be fortunate. Not only do those who commit wickedness prosper, they even test God and escape. Uh, this is out of Malachi. You really want to get a uh, couple of books reading, read the Bible and get a couple of books, a real attitude uh, presentation. You should read uh, Ecclesiastes. There's a lot of attitude there. And in Malachi, there's a lot of attitude <laughs> in Malachi. So this is what the Lord is saying that people are saying to him. I don't know why we should follow the Lord. Doesn't seem to help us. All those arrogant people, they're blessed. And not only that, but they commit wickedness and then they prosper. They even test God and they get out of it. Notice that Bible-believing, born-again Christians never escape God's tests. That never happens. You never hear a Christian going, ah, I was being tested by God, but I snuck out. <laughs> it's never, never heard that ever because it doesn't happen that way. And the reason that it doesn't happen that way is because God would never let his children get away with living in foolishness and thinking that God approved it. He always confronts them. Why? Because he loves them. And what happens is people in, Christian, in the Christian faith think, well, we're Christians. We should always win all the battles here on earth. And it's like, no, that is what have the new earth and heavens, the new heaven is going to be for, winning all those battles uh, where there won't be any of those battles anymore. We're done with those battles. But here on earth, God does something that's far greater. He demonstrates his wisdom in each and every believer by each and every trial that he allows. He demonstrates his wisdom to the church and to the principalities and powers in higher places, according to Ephesians 3, 10, 11, and 12. He's demonstrating his wisdom on a consistent basis by allowing and permitting and then uh, changing and altering and all these things. He's showing how wise he really is, and we don't see it because we don't get the full picture. We get five or six pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that's 5,000 pieces big. And then we sit there and think, well, I don't get it. Well, that's just because you got five pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, that's 5,000 pieces big. And that's why you don't get it. And so it's that same thing where people that do knitting, I think anybody can, who's ever done, have you ever done, I'm, I'm not a knitter. My mom was a knitter. Have you ever done knitting? Me neither. Okay. So you ever see them, though? They're really nice on that. But you ever look underneath? It's all different colors and sizes and lengths, and it looks horrible. Well, that's our view. But God's view has the picture view. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's lined out perfect. That color's perfect there. That goes perfect there. And so the idea behind all of this to understand, this isn't, Christians aren't, the, oh, well, you know, we everything that we prevail. Sometimes God allows evil to continue in order to give evil a chance to repent. Not evil itself as in Satan, but the people of evil. Did you know that? Did you know in Romans chapter 9, it says that God shows his patience to those that are rebellious, that, that they may repent, that they may turn to him? And we as Christians are like going, no, kill them, God, kill them. And that's the attitude. And it's like, wait a second. 
The whole premise of Jesus coming was to deliver us from our own stupidness, and then he delivers us, and then we get mad when he doesn't take it out on those people that don't agree with us. It's like, that is so bizarre. So now that we're saved, we want him to pull out the, the, the bow and the arrow and start shooting all those people. Don't you want them to get saved like you got saved? And it's God's patience that offers them that salvation. So what happens for the Christian is they, they struggle between what feels pleasant and what feels bitter. And it's a genuine, it's a genuine thing. It's not bizarre. It's not, I'm not trying to be weird about it. It's a genuine thing. We sit there and we go, come on, Lord, show those people. Listen, if God wanted to show anybody anything, uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say he would. And then, so you get people and they get caught up and they get caught up in the politics. Or they get pu- caught up in the church stuff. Or, or even, just to be honest, they get caught up in the diseases that are going on in the world. They get caught up in the world. They get caught up, caught up, caught up, caught up. It's like, look, God has a plan and doesn't need anybody's permission to execute his plan or fulfill his plan. And he will do so in his perfect timing, whether you like it or not. And to turn to God and go, why should I serve God? All those other people just get away with so much is guaranteeing that you're going to get a swift kick on the backside of your existence if you catch my drift. And it's like, why would you do that? Then just don't do Don't do that. Don't challenge how God allows. He's God. Do you think he's lousy at his job? Because that's what we're saying. When we tell them you're not acting fast enough. Even in the great Psalms, even in the things that David wrote, he always concluded, but you're right, but you're right, but you're right. And it's like, that has to be our disposition. That has to be our attitude. Yeah, there's a lot of people who who we would all think, well, if the ground opened up and swallowed them whole, that'd be good. <laughs> but that attitude is wrong. I know, Dave, but it's how I feel. Well, don't live by your feelings first. (laughs) Live by the truth first. God is merciful. Perhaps we might follow his example. I don't know. Who knows? He knows. And he's only telling sometimes. All right. You're listening to the... Oh, by the way, the answer, by the way, was uh, uh, listen. The answer was hear. The answer was, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. I need to get that in. Okay, uh, you're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, Christian Station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Thanks for listening to David Spoon on KAAM. Bible Trivia is sponsored by Texas Air King, the coolest company in Texas. Trust the AC coach to take care of your heating and cooling needs. Call or visit him online today at texasairking.com. Every once in a while when I do the uh, radio hosting, I have this wonderful opportunity to talk to people that influence the church, that are a blessing to the church. Today is no different. I am honored and blessed, by the way, to have the opportunity to talk with Pastor Robert Morris. He is the founding and lead pastor of Gateway Church. He's a best-selling author. He's written some excellent material, but he has a new book out, which has the greatest title ever next to the Bible. The, the new book is called Take the Day Off. Please. That's all I ask for. The book is entitled Take the Day Off, Receiving God's Gift of Rest. Pastor Marshall, you're there with us. I am, David, and it is so good to talk with you today. I do want to let you know before we get going uh, that I was actually introduced to you by somebody at your church about a year ago. I was at a place called Inigen. And uh, somebody named Robert, who went to your church, he gave me your book, uh, you know, Beyond Blessed. And I had not uh, actually had the chance to engage on any of your material yet. I read that. It was a really timely book, which was really cool. Oh, and th- thank you. then I was able to go and get your book on the Holy Spirit, which I thought was one of the best pneumatology oh, books that I've read in eight in a long time. So just so that <laughs> you know, you. I really appreciate thank that. Thank you. I, I, I've, uh, I actually I came from a Baptist background. And um, and so I've actually had I have some friends that are uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. I have some friends that are Church of Christ, and I have some friends that you know just come from all sorts of different backgrounds that are not quote unquote Pentecostal charismatic. And again, that's not my background either. I went to Crystal, 
right there in Dallas and to East Texas Baptist College before that. But anyway, I've had so many guys tell me that they really appreciated um, that book on the Holy Spirit, um, and they may not even agree with everything in it, but they appreciated the sensitivity and the way I handled the, yeah, the it, person of the Holy Spirit. You know, you so. did, it was a great job. I mean, I was born and raised Jewish. I became a Christian. I'm oh, a, I have that. a Baptist and a Pentecostal ordination. <laughs> and just, Pentecostal. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Calminian, and I'm a manifold <laughs> millennialist. So <laughs> anytime you <laughs> want to sit great. there and talk about diversity, I'm there for you. The David Spoon Experience. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. Don't forget about livingitisgrip.com, a place where you can get music from September and Glenn regarding our show. Uh, let's get our next trivia question. But this trivia question, I want to make sure you understand, has a sponsor. And the trivia question sponsor is Texas Air Kings with Coach. Up next is Bible Trivia, sponsored by Texas Air King, the coolest company in Texas. Make sure your home is comfortable in any weather and contact the AC coach today. Call or visit him online at texasairking.com. There you go. And we say a big thank you to them. Uh, it makes it easier for me when you have sponsors like that for me not to have to go, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Can I have some more, sir? <laughs> so, so that's uh, from Oliver Twist when he wanted more porridge. Anyway, uh, here's the trivia question. Greater love hath no man than this. What's the rest of the verse? Greater love hath no man than this. And you got to fill in the blank. If you know the answer, you're welcome to call in. I'll say the number for those that want to make the call. 972-445. 0770 or you can text in 214-210-8483 we already have somebody calling in i think it's kind of cool that we got somebody that's sponsoring the trivia because it's kind of a cool thing and uh believe me i am not trying to tell you by the way and if you've listened to the show and you know me uh, my whole thing my whole whole thing is to what push you closer to the lord it doesn't matter what's going on around you it doesn't matter if they start shooting christians doesn't matter you got to stay close to the Lord, okay? All right. We got the gun? All right. This is David. Who am I talking to? This is Al. Hey, Al. What's going on? We got Not the, a lot. We got the buzz going on before we even got to talk to you. We I got just the knew bell. He was gonna. He was going to answer it correct. So that, that is somebody working in the gift of prophecy right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. Greater love hath no man than this. That he lay down his life. Correct. For, his, for, for another. For his right. Brother. For his for another or for his friends. Right. And that's why that's important. Because the friends part of that actually becomes an important element. So uh, who would not lay down their life for their child or their spouse? Many people would do that. I mean, there's many people have and would do that. But this is laying down your life for another or for a friend, somebody that's not closely connected by blood, but somebody that you have connection to. And that is a enormous sacrifice. I think uh, in the next day or so, we'll be talking about uh, Veterans Day and people willing to sacrifice their lives on the behalf of others. It's like that level of of commitment and love goes far above norm family commitments. That's why that's so mm -hmm. important. Yes, sir. All right. Excellent job, right. my friend. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. God Talk bless. You again. Bye -bye. Uh -huh. All right. Great job there. And uh, we have a bunch of people texting in too. So everybody, uh, everybody that got that uh, correct on the texting. Uh, and that's why you have to understand one another friends doesn't matter the translation. The idea is that goes beyond. You're not just laying down your life for your spouse. Or your child, but this goes beyond that. And it's like, ooh, that's pretty intense. Don't forget our website, he must increase.org. Website, he must increase.org, he must increase.org. Email David at he must increase.org. Facebook, he must increase ministry. YouTube, he must increase ministry.
Okay, and uh, like I said before, we're not trying to do an Oliver Twist thing, but we are at the 9th of November, and I know what's going to happen. Just in case you don't know, I'm going to help you. So when you get into the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th of November, there's a lot less giving that's going on. So you'll hear me harp about giving a little bit more between now and then so uh, that we can pay our bill. (laughs) We feel that's a good thing on the show. I don't know. Uh, we'll do a very fast history and then go right into the teaching. So let's go ahead and history. Hit the history. Let's go living in the past. Let's go living in the past. All right. There are a couple of things you need to know about today. Today is go to an art museum day today. I don't know what that means. I don't really, you know, is it the art museum of how they made the pastrami sandwich? I would go to that. I'm just saying. I mean, that would be something. National uh, Young Readers Day, always important. It's also Stop Freaking Out and Trust Your Savior Day. Uh, I made that one up, but I think it's a good one. <laughs> Stop freaking Say out. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. You like this show too much. You're having too much fun. Uh, Albert Einstein on this day in 1921, so 99 years ago, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Definitely not in grooming. <laughs> Not with that dude's hair. Come on. Come on. I mean, if that guy was around today and he was doing uh, a Snapchat or whatever those things are with the pictures. What's the picture thing? Is that Snapchat or I think, something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, he'd get – he'd get <laughs> – it would brutalize that guy. I feel like guy. they'd make a filter out of it. Yeah. I mean, they'd be like, okay, is that a bird in there? <laughs> That's what they say. And then last but not least, 1979, nuclear attack. See, everybody's freaking out. And for many times, it's for nothing. NORAD uh, notified the National Security Advisor. Uh, Soviet Union had launched uh, 250 ballistic missiles. Uh, they would need to make a decision of the president within three to seven minutes. Uh, It was a training scenario that was accidentally loaded into the operational computer, and it was wrong. You know how many times God has saved the earth? (laughs) Wow. Okay, here you go. I understand that there is disappointment as a Christian, and I'm just going to say that. There's disappointment for people, okay? But the one thing that you can't do when you're facing disappointment, when you're facing challenges, is you can't blame God. And you think, well, that just, of course you can't blame God. Yes, yes, but slow down. Let me let me explain to you the difference between blaming God directly and indirectly. And this was in my intro. In Job 32, 1 through 2, here's what it says. These three men stopped answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. But Elihu, the son of Barakal, the Buzite of the family of Ram, became very angry for with Job for justifying himself rather than God. So in Job's situation, from chapters 1 and 2, in Job, he was great. And the New Testament said Job was great. But for chapters 3 through 31, Job was not great. So you can't unread it. It's what it says. His argument was not that everything he said was not wrong, okay? Everything he said was not wrong, but his argument was based on this premise. And let me just help you so I want to get you to this place. Job's argument was based on that he had done no wrong, not on anything else. He, his, his argument was that he justified himself, his words, his actions, his behavior, his existence. He justified himself. By justifying himself, he indirectly blamed God. What Job was saying is, my life has been such that what I am receiving is not appropriate to how I have lived my life. And that charge only goes to God. So what he did was he, in chapters 3 through 31, blamed God indirectly. And all I am challenging you to do as a genuine, born-again, Bible-believing Christian is to make sure that if you feel like your team lost or your team didn't do what you thought or this is going on or this is going on or life's unfair and this is unfair, I am telling you right now, be very careful about blaming 
God and justifying yourself. We said this last Friday. I'll say it every day for the rest of my life if I have to. If God treated us fairly, then the moment that any one of us sinned, we should have been eradicated out of existence. So yes, life's not fair because you got to go on past your first sin, didn't you? Like, yes. And the, the reason that that's important is for you and I to grasp that when we justify ourselves in cosmic realms, we blame God. You want to hear something that's dumb? Blame God. Why shouldn't you walk with a limp? <laughs> If you, if you blame them. In other words, I'm saying that, I'm not saying that against people, but I'm saying that in the spectacular symbolic language. God owes you and I nothing. I don't care what people owe each other on earth. I don't care what that uh, right, wrong, whole, salute. The entire planet is owed zero by God. And to justify ourselves is to blame him. And that's a sin. Now, it's one thing to bring that complaint to God and then surrender it. And that's the practicality of what David did, of what even 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 Job in his own right, although God gave him a lot of space, 20, 30, uh, 29 chapters just to go, 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 go. And then once God challenged him, what did Job say? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke about things I never should have spoke about. I should just be quiet and shut up, and I'm sorry. And that ought to be, I mean, that's not in the book just so we can go, ha, Job, what a dummy. It's like that's in the book, so we don't do that. <laughs> you see, it's in there, so you and I don't go. Uh, well, I'll just do the same thing Job did. No, because Job had to repent. It's like no, don't do what Job did. It was dumb, and God called him on the carpet, and he was guilty, and he had to ask. I mean, before the Lord, asked for grace in his own way. Oh man, I just spoke about things I never should have spoke about. Exactly. You serve the awesome God. He reigns over the universe. Don't tell God how to be God. You just work on being his kid. He'll take care of the rest of it. You think, man, that's harsh. That's true no matter what's going on outside of your four walls, period. Okay? All right. You're listening to the David Swin Experience right here on KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Moving is hard. It's a moment that everyone dreads. But wait, there's an answer. Jesus can help. And for the moving parts, Men of God Moving is there for you. Men of God Moving is a full-service Christian moving company that is locally owned and operated, serving the entire Dallas and Fort Worth area. Men of God Moving helps with homes, apartments, offices, long and short distance relocations, and so much more. They offer packing and unpacking services, loading and unloading, assembling and disassembling, plus many other helpful services. Tell them you heard it on the David Spoon Experience and receive a substantial discount. Substantial means a whole bunch. Call them at 817-707-7672 or go to their website, menofgodmoving.com. That's menofgodmoving.com. And check them out on Facebook. The Lord's Word says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. Ephesians 6, 7. Allow men of God moving the privilege of serving you. And listen to Johnny Hill, the owner, often on the David Spoon Experience. To hear his testimony, reach out to men of God moving. Johnny's testimony will move you. God bless. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. 
Do you know how you keep going? Do you know how you keep putting one foot in front of the other? Do you know how you don't give up? Do you know how you don't quit even though you want to quit? You fix your eyes on Jesus. You see with God. When Peter went out of that boat and stepped on that water, there is no natural principle in the world, in, in, in any normal universe, that would allow Peter to walk on water. But he did one thing well. He looked at Jesus. And as he was looking at Jesus, the Bible says he walked on the water. He looked at his situation just focusing at Jesus. Then he took his eyes off of Jesus, and he saw the winds and the waves, and he sank. He lost the correct attitude when he stopped seeing with Jesus in the picture. Whatever you see, whatever you face, whatever you encounter, do not see it or face it in the natural. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So everything you see, you must insert the picture of Jesus. The David Spoon Experience. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. I'm super excited because the Lord just directed me into something I'm going to share. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, so I, I you know, had this thing, had this thing planned out, and the Lord was like, go over here, Dave. Wrong. Over here, dumb, dummy. It's like, okay. <laughs> Okay, he didn't make the noise, but that's not the point. Uh, well, let's cover these other things real fast, and let me get into it. First of all, uh, I will give you a chance on the trivia questions. up to you. Uh, if you can text in, try and do that first. Uh, if you're going to call in, I'm going to be quick with you, okay, so I can get to this other thing. So don't be mad about it. I'm not trying to cut you off. All right, uh, the trivia question. The Lord is my strength and my – and I'm going to stop right there. There's two answers that you can fill in there. One's in the Psalms and one's in Exodus. The Lord is my strength and my... No, but that's a good guess. Okay. <laughs> T and I are doing this. All right, so that's number one. Number two, don't forget about the website, he must increase.org. Website, he must increase.org, he must increase.org. Email David at he must increase.org. Facebook, he must increase ministry. YouTube, he must increase ministry. Okay, number three. I'm just rolling along, people. Number three. Don't forget what I said uh, in the very beginning of the show. For those that missed it, you must listen. It is fine to keep up, but it is not fine to get caught up. It is fine to keep up. It is not fine to get caught up. And I, I just define that by very simply, if you're looking at your internet feed every five minutes to get some kind of news update, you're caught up. You're caught into it. You're stuck. You're in like in a web. It's like, get out of that. Uh, I hate to use, I won't use the, okay. So uh, uh, moons ago when we had that 9-11 issue, there was a cartoon that uh, uh, dealt with that uh, when, uh, you know, it was a pretty shocking time, the 9-11 uh, period. I think most people would agree with that. And uh, when that happened, there was a cartoon and it showed people and they were uh, had uh, uh, blankets on and they were in front of the news and they wouldn't eat. They wouldn't go to the bathroom. They wouldn't do anything. They'd just sit there in front of the news. No matter what happened, uh, they wouldn't even move. And it's like they stopped living. And it's like, you can't do that. You can't stop living. You can't stop being a Christian because you don't know what is or isn't going to happen uh, now or in uh, 10 weeks or in uh, 72 days or whatever's going to happen, whatever's going to come. So what? You still have the Lord as your Savior. And I'm going to say this for in a pro capacity for both uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden right now. I'm going to say a mutual uh, uh, statement. Ready? Yeah, I probably haven't heard much of this. We should be praying for all of our leaders. I'm not sure at what point, I'm not sure at what point we stopped praying for leadership regardless. So I know there's a lot of people who are Republicans that don't like uh, Nancy Pelosi. Then there's a lot of people that uh, on the other side of it that don't like uh, Mitch McConnell. And they, they it's both sides, right? Aren't we supposed to be – wait, here's a, an unbelievable thought. Aren't we supposed to be praying for people – to be influenced by the Lord, okay? You're supposed to be praying to be influenced, for, pray for our leaders to be influenced by the Lord. Again, if you're going to call in on our show, you got to call the 
445-0770 number. So, number. so now somebody's calling in now on that. Uh, on our line. So uh, we'll get that call in just a second. So here's the bottom line. The bottom line is you should be praying for people. You don't want to pray that God opens up holes and swallows people. That's not what he's praying. And uh, after we take this caller, I'm going to deal with this out of Nehemiah. See, there's text. See, Bible text. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hey, David. This is Al. Hey, what's going on? All right, my friend. Uh, hold up. You ready for this? Give you the answers real quick. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. You know I do. All right. Here we go. The Lord is my strength and my. Is it either song or shield? Right. Both of those are correct. (laughs) Song would be out of Exodus, and shield would be out of the Psalm, Psalm 28 7. So God is our strength. And our shield, which is our protection, and the strength, and our song, which is our singing, our joy, our happiness. So very good, excellent job, my brother. Good all job right. in filling in today. All right, sorry about calling you on. The oh, that's line. okay. No, no, all, right. all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right, bless you. All right, here we go. So I want to bring this point up. It's really important because you're you. Mo- I've already heard what everybody's had to say. Okay, I've heard the. Pro and con. I don't care. (laughs) Wonder why I don't care. Because of this. This right here. Ready? In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year, uh, with uh, King Artaxix, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. Okay. The dude was the cupbearer, right? I'm bringing the king the wine. When somebody brings you the wine, you're the king, you better be smiling. That might, that might be a nice way to say it. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? He knew it wasn't sick. This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Listen to what's the next verse. Then I prayed to the God of heaven. And I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, let him send me to the city of Judah where my fathers are buried so I can rebuild it. And the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, How long are you going to be? And when will you get back? So it pleased the king to send me. So I set a time. Now, I got news for you. Everybody's talking about these different things uh, and different elements. But aren't you and I Bible-believing, born-again Christians? And shouldn't we be praying for leadership, be it Donald Trump, Joe Biden, or both? That whoever takes the position, whoever ends up in that position, is influenced by the Holy Spirit of God so that our nation can make the best possible decisions. Do you really think that the political parties control the universe powers and determine what people will or won't do? Do you really think that? Do you really think that little of God? Isn't he the one that spoke? And the universe came into existence. Of all the people on the planet that should have a sense of comfort no matter what happens, it should be the Christians who know that the power of prayer and for the will of God to be done is of all things the most important. So why, why do we take this human position instead of the divine position? Shall we not ask and petition the king of the universe to change our nation into such a place so as the glory of God can be seen? Is that not our call? I mean, I I, I can tell you right now, the one thing this nation has, you had 74 million on one direction, and then you get to the counting and figure that out. Maybe it's 70, maybe it's 69. You have 70 million on the other, maybe it's 69, maybe it's 70. I don't know. Here's what I know. We're so divided. And this I know, a house divided cannot stand. That I know. I don't know a lot. No Abraham Lincoln didn't come up with that. For all those scholars out there in the media, Jesus said a house divided cannot stand. One thing we better have. I'm not going to compromise on my Christian faith, are you? No. 
know. So what we'd better find out is if the Lord will have mercy on us as a people and will empower through the Holy Spirit the leaders and the people that direct this nation. No matter what the media says, we want God to move upon all of them. And in fact, we should be praying that God moves upon the media so they'd stop being liars. That'd be just a great idea right there. I just thought of that. I probably should have been saying that all along too. Bottom line, who's in charge? God. Or am I in charge? Nope. Are you in charge? No. Are they in charge? No. God is in charge. How about we do this weird thing? We trust him, pray to him, ask him for help, and move forward. How about that? What an idea. Who'd have thunk that? Maybe we should have. I understand. I'm saying we keep up. Don't get caught up. I get it. But whatever lies down, whatever becomes, you be the Christian. The follower of Jesus. You'd be praying for. I mean, I actually saw a post from Christian saying, I'm not going to love my enemy. It's like, could you spit in the face of Jesus anymore? Can't do that. He's our Lord. Okay? Get that? Does that make sense? I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to get you to the right place. The Lord place. Be like Mary. And sit at the feet of the Lord. And not Martha, who was freaking out on everything that was or wasn't getting done. Okay? I choose Mary. (laughs) That's what I choose. All right, folks. You've been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the Christian station here in Texas. 23-hour break. Now we'll come back. More Insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. Just as I am, he reached down. The views expressed on the preceding program were those of the speakers and not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.